October is finally among us, and that means it is spooky season! Woo! You can't tell what I'm doing, but I got woo spooky things. <laughs> what is this intro? This time of year is so much fun. We have so many games getting updates, spooky movies to watch, and even art contests on my Discord. Yeah, shameless promotion, I know. As you guys can probably tell by the title of this video, the main focus of this channel right now, Sea of Thieves, is pretty much guaranteed to get some form of Halloween update this year, and today we'll be predicting exactly what this update might be. Now, these aren't exactly patch notes. I don't know what they're doing yet, but... These are basically just predictions on what I think they're going to be. Now, before we get into my predictions, we should probably go over the quick history of Sea of Thieves Halloween updates, because this will help make our predictions. So, back in 2018, when the game was around six months old, we got our first Halloween update, Festival of the Damned. Now, back in 2018, the game didn't really have major content updates monthly like it does now. It had these little mini events called Build Rat Adventures. So this update, it's not really an update, but this update brought special colored lanterns called the Flames of Fate to the game. And while this may have not been the biggest update in the long run because it literally just had you die in certain ways and light lanterns and stuff, uh, it paved way for the largest PvP-focused addition to the game, which will come in 2019, the Fort of the Damned. Using these special Flames of Fate from the Festival of the Damned update back in 2018, uh, you know, you die to a skeleton, die to a shark, all that fun stuff, you were to light these special lanterns in the fort held by statues of the Ferryman, and once all of the flames were lit, and you put a ritual skull on top of the headless skeleton in the main room, you activated the largest fort in the game. Now I'm sure this fort needs no introduction because literally everyone on YouTube knows what it is because of all of the Athena Steel videos. So basically once this fort is active, a bunch of these special skeletons spawn that can only be killed by a certain flame color. It's kind of hard to explain, but as you can see in the background gameplay, that's what's happening. I'm holding up a green lantern, and green skeletons can be killed. But once these waves of skeletons are defeated, the final boss, the Ghost of Grey Marrow, appears. Now he does some pretty cool attacks, he slams some skeleton chests together, he does some cool stuff, and you can actually pretty easily defeat him. But once you defeat the boss, you get the largest loot haul ever given out by a fort, including the fabled Chest of Legends. Woo! Basically a catalyst for all of the Athena Steel videos here on YouTube, because who doesn't like stealing stuff in a game called Sea of Thieves? Now with that long, long history lesson out of the way, that you probably skipped all the way to this point of the video, let's dive into the actual content of this video, and that is the predictions of this year's Sea of Thieves update. I can't talk today. So, my first prediction is surrounding the Four of the Damned itself. Now, as we know, Grey Marrow has been the main boss ever since the fort came out, but what if this year we have a new final boss that'll just be available this October, or however long this update's gonna be lasting? The Ghost of Captain Flameheart. Now, hear me out before everyone starts commenting, Basically, Flameheart is just a reskin of Grey Marrow, but with some cool attacks. I don't know, they're different enough to make him unique. So, for instance, his slam attack, instead of being two skeleton captain's chests, can be chests of rage that make the same shockwave that Ashen Lords do, or something like that. Now, instead of having Captain Flameheart do the same attacks as Captain Grey Marrow, except, you know, some cooler particle effects or whatever, he can have two special attacks that will only be done by him. First one is around the Ashen Lords themselves. Now, they're not going to be the real Ashen Lords, they're the ghosts of the defeated Ashen Lords. So, they're going to have the health of a normal skeleton captain, and do the same attacks roughly as the first tier uh, Ashen Lord fight. So, just like the charge forward, 
breathing fire, throwing ash and rocks. That kind of stuff, just to spice up the combat a bit. And if that wasn't spicy enough, next update's gonna be even spicier. So this next attack will allow him to summon a ghost ship straight from the Sea of the Damned and circle the island, revealing any any tuckers in the lower rocks of the island, and making the fight a little more dynamic, utilizing both land and sea combat, which I think will be pretty cool, not gonna lie. Moving on from that, that's a cool feature and all, but remember the summer challenges? Well, what if there's some form of, like, fall challenges, right? Make the make these things seasonal. I think I thought it was pretty fun to hunt down all of the summer challenges and getting all the cool titles like Legend of the Sun or Drunken Sailor or stuff like that. What if like there were special fall challenges that were different from the summer challenges enough to make them unique enough to make new titles like Ghost Captain or Legend of the Damned or something like that. I think those titles were pretty cool to get, but hey, there can even be some challenges surrounding the actual Four of the Damned itself to keep going with this pattern of, you know, surrounding that fort, maybe expanding it a bit. Now, my final idea is surrounding the spookiest update ever to come in the Sea of Thieves that came out in, like, May. Wait, did it come out in May? I don't know. Let's look. It came out in June. I just looked it up. Anyways, more specifically, the voyage is offered by the Order of Souls. So if you went on this voyage right now, you would just go up against two waves of ghost ships, fighting them off, three hits, kill a ship, right? What if a strange energy has corrupted the seas surrounding the ghost ships from the voyages, making them tougher to send back to the Sea of the Damned, maybe with five cannonballs instead of three, and causing a spectral fog around the island and glowing green water. This corrupted water can't be swam through and will act like the water surrounding the Kraken when a pirate dives into it, basically instantly damaging them and sending them to the Fairy of the Damned in a, well, a matter of seconds. What's even spookier is that this corruption can allow your ship to slowly change into a ghost ship the more it sails through this corrupted water. After a set amount of time, I don't know how much, probably very long time to make it a little more easier, but the more you stay in this corrupted water, the more your ship will change into a ghost ship. And once a certain point passes, your ship will be completely lost and it will join the fleet itself. Another pirate can chase it down, sink it, and take the loot that was on the ship, or you can come back, sink the ghost of your ship, and take your loot back. I think this update will probably not happen because of how complicated having like a player ship join a fleet of ships that were already rendered, but I just think that's a cool idea, having a ghost of your ship able to be hunted down by other players. I think that's just, I don't know, that's like the ultimate Halloween update in my opinion. So what do you guys think of my predictions? There's only three of them, but do you think any of them will make it into the game? In my opinion, I think the first one has the best chance of being in there because, I don't know, Grey Marrow has been there for a while, but I think it's time for a fresh take on the Four of the Damned, but anything can happen at this point. It's rare, but if you like my content and you want to see more prediction videos in the future, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell to get notified because YouTube's notifications don't really work anymore. I don't have much time to make videos anymore because of college and stuff now, so my streaming schedule and video schedule has been set to whenever I feel like it. Because of this, there may not be as much content as there used to be on here. I used to upload or try to upload one video a week, but at this point, it might be a video every two weeks because I have zero free time outside of school and other things. But enough rambling for now. You guys have been here long enough. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you out on the seas.